Hey, it's Pastor Mike. Before we get to today's episode, I want you to know that we at Time of Grace have a ton of resources to help you in your walk of faith. From our TV program, to daily devotions, to our Grace Talks video devotions, to podcasts, to our blog, to books, to other books, to still more books, uh, whatever you're looking for and however you best learn, you can stay rooted in Jesus by taking time out for God's word every day. If you're interested, just go to timeofgrace.org to sign up for our daily email. Now, on to today's episode. What do you think is the most memorable prayer in all of the Bible? I think you've got one, right? You're probably thinking the Lord's Prayer. What is the most memorable prayer in the Old Testament? That's a little bit harder. And for me, it's the first long recorded prayer in Genesis chapter 18. And here's kind of the story behind it. Abraham is living in this area near a town called Sodom and another town called Gomorrah. And his nephew, his, his relative, lives inside that town. And God comes to him, we've got to back up 25 years. God comes to him about 25 years earlier and says, Abraham, you're going to be a father of a great nation and all these uh, countries are going to be blessed through you. Now it's 25 years later, it's been crickets on the procreative front, nothing is happening. And then God says, within a year, you're going to have your own baby. And you can imagine the joy of this moment as Abraham and Sarah, his wife, take this in. They had not gotten pregnant all these years, and suddenly, through miraculous means, they're going to have their own baby. And then on their way out, God says, and by the way, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, I have to destroy it. Wow, like deflating balloon as we try and figure this out. What was the sin that Sodom and Gomorrah did that is so devastating? This is what it says in Ezekiel chapter 16. Now, this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and the needy. They were haughty and did detestable things before me. Therefore, I did away with them, as you have seen. So when I heard this story as a kid, and I think maybe you know the story, as Abraham negotiates with God with like this bold and with this persistent prayer, I always thought, man, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were like the worst. In fact, this is true, in my sandbox as a kid, we had the sandbox underneath a two-story playhouse. It was awesome that my dad built we would set up these stone pavers and we would knock them down with balls and say that this is God's destruction on Sodom and Gomorrah. We thought it was great. Like, they deserve it. They're the worst people ever. But then, as an adult, what did God say was the indictment against Sodom and Gomorrah? They were overfed, arrogant. Could these things be said about you, me? Uh, they were unconcerned. They didn't take care of the poor. You ever done detestable things? This changes the whole perspective for me because there is a day and there is a moment that you and I have to stand before Almighty God. And we can ask a simple question just like Abraham. Abraham had a question, God, for the sake of 50 righteous people, will you save the rest of Sodom and Gomorrah? And I think we have a little bit different prayer. God, for the sake of one holy, just human being who is true God and true man, will you save me? God's answer is always yes. So let's go to him and pray. Heavenly Father, uh, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we look at this prayer of boldness and persistence, a prayer that cares for all people, help us to reflect on our own life, not the judgment of the world, but instead, let's take a look at our own heart, that in your mercy, you took on the wrath that was in the punishment that we deserve, and you've given us a freedom to live for you. Help us to live in joy in that freedom of forgiveness and grace. We ask this in your name. Amen.